Back in 2005, Molly Crew were out on tour to promote their anthology album Red, White & Crew. The promotion cycle for the record saw the group get banned from late night TV, and I'm going to be covering that in a separate video down the road. But today I want to talk about one specific concert the band played where they received some pretty devastating news. A female fan on her way to one of the band's concerts mysteriously vanished. Molly Crew would team up with America's Most Wanted to find out what happened, and today we're going to explore that story. On March 7, 2005, Molly Crew were set to play a show in Washington, D.C. at the MCI Center. A female fan, a 32-year-old named Tracy Gardner Tetso, who lived in Baltimore, was planning on driving to the nation's capital one day prior to meet a friend of hers, a man named Christian, who she was going to attend the show with. Christian had bought Tracy tickets to the Molly Crew show as a birthday present. But sadly, she never made it to the show or to Washington, D.C. On the morning of the concert, Christian phoned Tracy's place of work, a construction materials supplier, to see if she was there, but her supervisor said she wasn't. Her supervisor and friend Monica was quoted as telling America's Most Wanted, Tracy is a fun-loving person. She loved rock and roll and Molly Crew was her favorite. And fearing for her friend's safety, Monica called the police. The authorities soon started questioning Tracy's husband, her friends and family, and nobody had heard from her since 3.05 p.m. on March 6th the day of her disappearance. An outgoing call from her cell phone was made to her friend Christian, but he wasn't able to answer. He would call her back almost 16 minutes later, but it went straight to voicemail. The police were able to determine that Tracy's car was seen in the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel at 7.48 p.m. on March 6th going in the southbound direction. When her friends attempted to call her cell phone, it appeared to be turned off. The police would end up locating her car in the Baltimore suburb of Glen Burnie at a Days Inn motel 10 days after her disappearance. But there was no sign of a struggle, no forensic evidence, or even a body. At the time, the police had no leads, but they initially put up a $10,000 reward for any information that could help solve the case of her disappearance. Almost six weeks after going missing, the news reached the members of Motley Crue who were out on tour. The band was about to take the stage in Portland, Maine, when bassist Nikki Six received an email about the missing fan. He would tell the Baltimore Sun, I showed it to the band and we were like, we gotta do something. We knew a $10,000 reward had been put up, and we decided to match that. But what we could really do was get it national exposure. And that's exactly what happened. The band's involvement helped get the word out and the case got national attention. The band even paid to have Tracy's photo distributed through media outlets and teamed up with the TV show America's Most Wanted. Since her disappearance, Tracy's co-workers would spend their weekends looking for her and her supervisor would tell the son, when she didn't come to work that Monday morning, I knew right away, Tracy loves rock and roll and Molly Crew. She would not have missed it for the world. Tracy's family would receive an outpouring of support from friends and strangers, and Molly Crew at the time were planning on playing another show in the Washington area in August of 2005, with Six telling the son, We'll save two tickets for her in the front row. They're in her name at Will Call. We hope she picks them up. When the band's August show arrived, those tickets went unclaimed, but Tracy's parents attended the show and personally thanked the band for their help, as you can see here. Motley Crew with the band to personally thank them for their generous donation, what they've done for us uh, in helping with the search of our daughter. How you doing? I'm Nikki. Nikki? That's Nikki? Okay. Tommy. This is Tommy. Hello, how, how, you are you are you how you doing? Backstage, Tracy's parents had the chance to personally thank Tommy Lee and Nikki Six for their help, their support, and their caring. Well, hopefully it's helped a little bit, you know. Uh, yeah, it's helped tremendously. You can imagine. We want to personally thank you for all your your help that you've given. I mean, I'm telling you, you just don't understand what it's been. It's been great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. A lot of people thought that she had been found because there's been nothing on TV. Because it disappeared, right? Because yeah. it disappeared. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how many of your fans have stepped up and donated to the, to the reward awesome, fund. Okay. They, are, yeah. they are. They are. They come up, and, you know, and they email me all the time. We stay in touch yeah. now. It's just, yeah. it's just like, you know, and it's all because of you guys. It's all because Thank of you. you guys. Thank you. you know, this is my first concert. What am I in store for? This is your for? first concert? No way. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> My very <Don't> first. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's fun. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to like it. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to like it. Yeah. We got some stuff stand. specifically. That's what I understand. Here. Here. <laughs> you know, we, we immediately said, let's help with the, the money thing. But but like when you were talking, we said, who cares about the money? That's what we can go out in the press and talk about it. And that's what we need. Millions of people hear about it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's 
awesome to be able to meet you guys face to face. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. I know. The case wouldn't be solved until years later in 2010 when Tracy's husband would be arrested for her disappearance. No body was ever found, and it was the first murder conviction in Baltimore County history without a body. No body cases, as they're called, have become easier to investigate for the police due to technology. Investigators can look at communications, social media, financial transactions, and cell phones. In this case, cell phone records were important in the police's investigation, as her husband tapped Tracy's home phone thinking she was having an extramarital affair, and her employer also recorded all of her calls for quality assurance purposes. Those recorded calls captured Tracy talking about her failed marriage and involved Tracy and her husband arguing with each other. But the key piece of evidence that came to light several years later after her disappearance happened when Granny's surveillance camera from the days in showed a mysterious figure exit the car and showing the key fob being used to activate the car's security alarm. When Tracy's husband Dennis was interviewed by the police, he gave them his key to the car thinking it was a spare. But when the police investigated further, they soon found that the car only had one set of keys. The police determined that Dennis had to have been the person driving the car that night when Tracy disappeared, and he was the grainy figure captured on the days in security camera. Police had long suspected her husband, but without a smoking gun, it was difficult to press charges. Prosecutors would claim Dennis's actions constituted a crime of passion, alleging Tracy was having an affair with the man she was planning on seeing the Molly Crew concert with, and was about to divorce her husband. During her murder trial, recordings of the pair arguing were played for the jury. Without a body or any forensic evidence, first-degree murder charge would have been difficult to come by. Instead, the jury found Dennis guilty of second-degree murder, with a judge handing out a maximum sentence of 30 years, with all but 18 of them suspended. Dennis, for his part, has long claimed he had nothing to do with his wife's disappearance, and in February of 2019, he went before a parole board to secure his release, but was denied and remains in prison. When asked by commissioners if he had anything to say about his conviction, he said, quote, I have nothing to say. I didn't commit a crime. I have no idea where she, Tracy, is, and I will take it to my grave. In closing testimony to commissioners, Tetso choked back tears, saying, quote, I don't belong here. I want to get back to work. Please grant me parole. Commissioners denied his request, citing his lack of remorse, overwhelming evidence in the case, and loss of appeals. Gardner's foster sister had perhaps the most emotional testimony, saying her son, who was very young at the time of the murder, says he has no memory of his aunt. I said, you don't remember her going to your games or your Christmas birthdays, going to her house, going to the circus? And he says, no, I'm sorry. Tetsa will now have to serve the remainder of his term and with good behavior could be out as soon as November of 2022. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. And we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Story sticker.